That's why this year, I think that we can become a certified project learning tree green school. Yes, Carmen. But how do we find all the data we need? Well, let's use the green school's energy investigation. Mr. Jackson said that all we had to do was plug this into an outlet and then plug something else into it to measure how many watts it uses. Do you have a phone charger? Oh yeah, good idea. Do you know what this number means? Well, it helps if we know what a watt meter is measuring. A watt is the amount of energy expended over a period of time. In this case, we'll be measuring an hour of energy. So that's what this number is? Actually, this meter first measures the voltage of the outlet itself. That's how much potential energy the line is capable of producing. But that's not the energy it's producing now. Right. We need to set the meter to read kWh or kilowatt hour consumption. And a kilowatt is a thousand watts. You got it. So this setting will tell us how many kilowatts an electrical device expends over an hour of time. So that reading is the kilowatt hour consumption of my phone since you plugged it in. Yep, now if I push the button again, the meter now tells us how many hours have passed since we plugged in your phone. And why would you want to know that? Because if you divide the rate of kWh consumption of a device by the number of hours it's been plugged in, you get the rate of the device's consumption. Makes sense. Just divide the first number by the second number, and you can see how quickly my phone drains energy. Exactly! Cool, man, that's really useful. Yeah, so we should probably write our readings down. Yep. There's room for them right here in the energy investigation packet. Nice. Next, we should measure how much electricity the school's furnace uses. Or the refrigerator in the school kitchen. Or the entire computer lab. Right. Calculating the energy costs of equipment in the school can help us figure out which ones are draining too much electricity. I see. Then we can think about replacing those devices with more energy efficient ones. You know, there's a column right here for Energy Star equipment. Are they supposed to be good? Yeah, I heard these products save energy and are good quality. But even if that's not the case, we can still test their energy savings with the watt meter. We could even test which appliances have a phantom load. Like a ghost? Kind of like an electrical ghost. A phantom load is the electrical power used by some devices when they are turned off but still plugged in. Some electronics don't have a phantom load, but others eat up a lot of power while they're turned off. Oh, and once we figure out which ones have a phantom load, we should just unplug those electronics when we're not using them. Right, we can even test it now. See, even though your phone charger isn't charging anything right now, it's still eating up a lot of electricity just by staying plugged in. Man, I see your point. You know, that's a really great tool to help us avoid wasting energy. That's the idea. You can even use it to figure out what times of the day the building is using the most electricity and when it's using the least amount. Sweet. Let's go down to the kitchen and get some readings. It's pizza for lunch today, and I want to see how much electricity the oven takes to make my favorite food. Shanti and Kaden, how are we going green by using a watt meter? We can measure the electricity our school equipment uses and how much money it costs to run them. And we can see if the Energy Star equipment uses less electricity than some of our old equipment, and if that's the case, we may need to look into getting some new equipment. We can also figure out when the school is using the most amount of electricity and when it is using the least amount. Knowing these numbers helps us figure out ways where we can cut back on our electricity use. Excellent. Nicely done.